Good afternoon and welcome to the 59th annual Gerstecker Teacher Proficiency Award program. My name is Viola Collin and I'm the president of the Midland City Education Association representing the teaching and special services staff for the Midland Public Schools. It is an honor to have this opportunity to recognize the ongoing contributions teachers and we make to the children in this community. This afternoon we will be able to appreciate in a small way the many positive effects our teachers have from those who will be retiring from active teaching to those who will be recognized shortly for their excellence by being awarded the Gerstecker Teacher Proficiency Award. The teachers of Midland Public Schools understand the challenges facing families, students, and education itself today. Professionals in our schools continue to invest time, energy, and their own resources to accomplish, to assure opportunities for the children in their classrooms to succeed. Many times, our teachers are called upon to sacrifice this time and resources from their own families in order to assist their students. In many ways, teaching is not a science or even an art, but it's a calling. Teachers, more than any other profession, carry the potential of completely changing lives. This is a challenge and an opportunity that Midland Public Schools teachers embrace. Today, teachers face greater challenges than ever before. Expectations from our community and our nation have risen, and unfortunately, our resources have fallen. In individual classrooms around this community, teachers enter each day determining to improve and enhance the lives of our children who pass through their doors despite these challenges. In fact, the greater odd Teachers accept the challenges to adopt, to persevere, and to succeed. This is why not just anyone can be a teacher. A great teacher has to have certain qualities to be an icon of inspiration. Great teachers extract the hidden qualities of every student with words of inspiration, persistence, and creativity. As I mentioned previously, in order to be successful in this job, you need to recognize early on that it really isn't just a job at all, but a calling, a passion to shape the future of our children's lives for the better. To create an environment where learning is fun and students feel safe to take risks and reach their highest potential, everyone as a favorite teacher. We may love this special teacher for their knowledge, their enthusiasm, or just their charisma. Often, some of the best memories of our childhood revolve around a great teacher who inspired and changed our lives. Their words of actions linger in our memory decades after we leave school. They are passionate about the subject matter and enjoy teaching. In this world, none of us have achieved success without the guidance of a teacher. Before we begin with the recognition of our retirees and present the Gerstecker Proficiency Award winners, it is appropriate to acknowledge one of our broadly recognized favorite teachers who is no longer with us. Unfortunately for this community, this week we lost one of the best of our MPS family. The word capable and caring are faint praise for Jennifer Grace Turner Sisko, teacher and math department head at Midland High School. The impact she had and continues to have on students and adults alike is infinite. Her positive, optimistic outlook on children and our schools fostered what students could achieve and what adults could expect. 
We are here today to honor the great accomplishments teachers have with students on a daily basis and the lifelong positive impact that dedication creates. Our Midland Public Schools family has come together to celebrate excellence and service. This is a perfect setting, perfect setting, to recognize and commemorate her. May we please have a moment of silence to honor the life and the memory of Jennifer Grace Turner Sisko. Thank you. I wore some pink in her honor, so she will be dearly missed. As we continue to celebrate the 59th anniversary of this event, I ask you to take a moment to consider the list of names in your programs, where we acknowledge previous Gerstecker winners dating back to when this award was established by the Gerstecker family in 1956. On this list are some of the finest people ever to grace the community with their passion for teaching. I wish to thank the Gerstecker family for their ongoing support of our schools and the many other projects in our community. During the first portion of this program this afternoon, we honor years of service in public education. These years may be with Midland Public Schools and other districts in the state or around the nation. These years may be as a teacher, a counselor, a therapist, or an administrator. Each of these MCA members I'm about to acknowledge will receive a certificate and a pin from the Midland City Education Association indicating their years of service. This recognition will take place at the end of the year luncheons and programs at individual buildings. I would like to ask each of these individuals to stand and be recognized. Please hold your applause to each group as standing. If you are celebrating 25 years of service in public education, would you please stand? If you are celebrating 30 years, would you please stand? <laughs> if you are celebrating 35 years in public education, please stand. <laughs> this is rare, but if you are celebrating 40 years, in public education, will you please stand? There's only a few crazy enough, like Gary, but. <laughs> and now, for the retirement segment of our program, I introduce to you Midland Public Schools Superintendent, Mr. Mike Sherrill. First, let me move Vi step out of the way here. I'm, I think I'm a little taller than Vi. Stacker <laughs> Foundation for uh, sponsoring these awards. It has been my pleasure to get, get to know the staff, students, family, and community since beginning my Midland Public Schools tenure just sh 10 short months ago. It has been so evident in my travels and encounters throughout the Midland Public Schools buildings and classrooms this year that our teachers are selfless, inspired, devoted educators who put our students and their learning in the forefront of everything they do. We know education, and especially teaching, is not just a job. It is a calling, a mission, a lifelong allegiance to, to bringing knowledge, understanding, and the thirst for long life learning into students' lives. This calling is not for the faint of heart. It is only for those who are brave enough to take on the amazing trust to make deep-rooted differences in the lives of children. Can't we all remember the teachers in our lives who imparted that thirst? They are probably a huge part of the reason we took on this lifelong quest. John F. Kennedy, in July 25th, 1961, in American Education Week Proclamation 3422 stated, 
The education of our people should be a lifelong process by which we continue to feed new vigor into the life stream of the nation. Through intelligent, reasoned decisions, let us not think of education only in terms of its cost, but rather in the terms of infinite potential of the human mind that can be realized through education. John F. Kennedy wrote these words almost 53 years ago. They are just as profound today as they were when were back then. Thank you, MPS teachers, for all you do to stretch, guide, and impart new vigor into our MPS student life stream each and every day, year after year. We truly encourage our students' infinite potential and encourage them to make intelligent, reasoned decisions throughout their lives. No other profession can make such a profound difference. As dedicated educators, we have so much to be proud of. This evening, we want to send our sincere thanks and very best wishes to our 25 retirees. Wow, 25 retirees. For sharing their 641 combined years of service in public education with the students, family, and staff of Midland Public Schools. I say that again, 641 combined years. Obviously, they will be missed. Now what I'm really up here for is to call the retirees up. Let's, let's do so. Our first retire, our retirees, please come up to the stage as I call your name. Our first retire is Kathy Hawkins Legault. <laughs> Kathy is retiring from her special services teaching position at H.H. Dow High School. Kathy joined the Midland Public School staff in 1987 as a special education teacher at both Midland High School and H.H. Dow High School. Before coming to MPS, Kathy was a pre-vocational teacher at the Bona Vista School District for seven years. We'd also like to express our sincere thanks to Kathy, who graciously chaired the very special Gerstecker Proficiency Award ceremony event for many years. And Kathy had 34 years of service. Our second retiree, Carl Hoffman. <laughs> Carl is retiring from physical education teaching position at Jefferson Middle School. Carl began his MPS career in 1995 as a counselor at Northeast Intermediate School. Carl returned to physical education classroom in 2011 at Jefferson. In addition to his MPS counseling and PE positions, Carl has coached wrestling, basketball, track, and baseball at both the middle and high school levels. Before coming to MPS, Carl was a member of the counseling, teaching, and coaching staff at Bullock Creek and with the East Detroit Public Schools in East Point, Michigan. Carl has 25 years of service. Thank you, Carl. Our third retiree is Andrea Cruff. Andrea is retiring from her special services teaching position with Seabird Elementary at the end of the school year. Andrea joined MPS in 1993 as an LD teacher at Woodcrest Elementary School. Before coming to MPS, Andrea taught special education for eight years in both elementary and secondary schools in other Michigan school districts. Andrea is retiring with 29 years of service. Our next retiree is Kathleen Howey. <laughs> Kathleen retired from her position as a kindergarten teacher with Seabird Elementary School. She began her MPS career in 1990 as a third grade teacher at Parkdale Elementary School. During her time as a member of the MPS staff, Ms. Howey taught reading recovery in Title I for Midland Public Schools as well as serving as a building technology instructional leader. Before coming to MPS, Kathleen taught in Sutton's Bay Public Schools for three years and in parochial schools in Mid-Michigan for three years. 
Kathleen is retiring with 27 years of service. And our next retiree is Darla Iaquinta. Darla is retiring from her teaching position with Midland Public Schools Music Department. Her employment with MPS began in 1999 in an elementary music teaching position. Since joining MPS, Darla has mainly taught music at Adams and Chestnut Hill. Before coming to MPS, Darla taught music at Ithaca Public Schools. And Darla is retiring with 25 years of service. Our next retiree is William Leahy. Bill is retiring from his position as seventh grade Eastern Hemisphere teacher at Jefferson Middle School. He began his career with MPS in 1987 as a fifth grade teacher at East Lawn Elementary. While at MPS, in addition to his teaching responsibilities, Bill has been a track coach, safety patrol advisor, and faculty manager. Bill is retiring with 27 years of service. Next retiree, Karen Martin. Karen is retiring from her teaching position in the English department at H.H. H. Dow High School. Karen joined MPS in 1983 as a drama English teacher at Jefferson Intermediate School. In 1997, Karen moved to the English department at H.H. H. Dow High School in addition to her teaching responsibilities, Karen has served as Drama Club Advisor at Jefferson for a number of years and a co-sponsor for the DHS Class of 2009. Karen is retiring with 29 years of service. Our next retiree is Mark Pabosik. Mark is retiring from his sixth grade teaching position with Jefferson Middle School. Mark began his MPS career in 1996 as a third grade teacher at East Lawn Elementary School. Mark has also taught at Chippewasa Elementary, Cook Elementary, Adams Elementary, and Central Middle School. During part of his time at Central, he served as their guidance counselor. In 2008, Mark moved to Jefferson Middle School where he teaches sixth grade math and language arts. In addition to his teaching responsibility, Mark has coached wrestling and swimming. Mark is retiring with 18 years of service. Our next retiree is Sally Ray. Excuse me. Sandy. Sandy, I'm sorry. I wasn't sure I heard that right. I'm going to have to make sure I catch all the Sallies here as I read forward. Sorry, Sandy. <laughs> Sandy is retiring from her position for third grade teacher at Woodcrest Elementary School. Sandy began her MPS career in 1994 as a resource room teacher at Woodcrest Elementary School, where she spent her entire MPS career. Before coming to MPS, Sally taught for 13 years in Traverse City Public Excuse me, Sandy. <laughs> 13 years in Traverse City Public Schools and Traverse Bay ISD. Sandy has spent 37 years at uh, 37 years of service. Not 20. Not 20. Our next retiree is Martha Shaheen. Martha is retiring from her position as Spanish and English teacher at H.H. Dow High. Martha began her MPS career in 1988 at Jefferson Intermediate School as an English teacher and a drama club advisor. In 1997, Martha moved to H.H. Dow High School 
as a Spanish teacher. Martha was a DH class advisor for the class of 2001. Before coming to MPS, Martha taught Spanish and English at East Jordan High School. Martha is retiring with 25 years of service. And our next retiree is Maggie Steele. Maggie is retiring from her first grade teaching position at Adams Elementary. Her employment with MPS began in 1984 as a .4 instrumental music teacher at Adams, Parkdale, Plymouth, and Sugnet. In 1987, Maggie moved into a .5 kindergarten position combined with a .4 music assignment at Adams Elementary. In 1990, Maggie taught first grade at Adams and has conti continued in that position ever since. Before coming to MPS, Maggie taught at Van Buren Public Schools in Belleville. Maggie was a 2004 Gerstacker recipient. Maggie is retiring with 30 years of service. Our next retiree is Joanne Tickner. Joanne is retiring from her speech and language, language pathologist position with the MPS Special Services Department. She began her career with MPS in 1990 as a speech and language therapist. Before coming to MPS, Joanne worked at Gladwin High School, Lewiston School District, and Lamarck School District in Lamarck, Texas. Joanne was a 2010 Gerstacker recipient. Joanne is retiring with 28 years of service. Our next retiree is Bonnie Westervelt. <laughs> Bonnie is retiring from her East Lawn Elementary principal position. Bonnie joined MPS in 1995 as a .5 endow teacher in the gifted and talented program at Cook Elementary School. In 1996, she became a full-time GT consultant at Cook and Longview Elementary Schools. In addition to her teaching responsibilities, Bonnie was a student council advisor at Cook. In 2002, Bonnie began her administrative career with MPS as the principal of Parkdale Elementary School. In 2010, Bonnie moved into her current role as principal of East Lawn Elementary School. We will miss Bonnie's knowledge, wit, and wisdom. She has been a respected member of the M MPS administrative team. Bonnie is retiring with 19 years of service. Our next retiree is Wendy Winters. Wendy is retiring from posi her position as a third grade teacher at Chestnut, Chestnut Hill Elementary, where she began her career with MPS in 1977. In 1989, Wendy moved into the Endow Gifted and Talented Program at Chestnut Hill. In 2008, Wendy returned to the third grade classroom, but this time at Adams Elementary. In 2010, Wendy returned to Chestnut Hill, again as a third grade teacher. In addition to her teaching responsibilities, Wendy served as student council advisor for many years at Chestnut Hill. Wendy is retiring with 37 years of service. Once again, 641 combined years of service standing in front of you, so they will uh, certainly be missed by MPS Public Schools. Thank you, retirees. and recognition of these outstanding individuals more difficult. Before we re begin and bring up our winners, I'd like to thank several people who make this program possible. 
First, my fellow Gerstecker committee members. Ms. Yvonne Gordon, Secretary of the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. Ms. Bridget Hockemeyer, Principal at Plymouth Elementary School. Previous Gerstecker winner, Ms. Linda Murray, Orchestra teacher at Northeast, Plymouth, and Adams. And the person who makes so much of this happen, our Gerstecker Committee Chair, Ms. Dawn Malthrop, teacher at Dow High School. Thank you to the Midland High Honors Orchestra and to their director, Ms. Kathy Peretz. Also to Mr. Kurt Gladhill for designing the beautiful cover for our program. A special thank you to Cindy Young, our MPS Sports Secretary who always works very hard to ensure the success of this program. At this time, I turn the program over to fellow Gerstecker Committee member and Midland Public Schools Board Secretary, Ms. Yvonne Gordon. Good afternoon. My name is Yvonne Gordon. I'm your Midland Public Schools Board of Education Secretary. And I'm very happy to be here today, so I thank you for inviting me. Thank you also for giving me the opportunity to be part of this Gerstacker Awards Committee. I enjoyed being on this committee very much. My only regret was that I couldn't choose more winners. I first became acquainted with the Midland Public Schools and the teachers there about 17 years ago when my daughter enrolled at Chestnut Hill. And like a lot of mothers, I was kind of apprehensive about letting her go off to school. So I took every opportunity to go to school with her. I volunteered in the classroom, I became a room parent, and I participated in PTO, and I enjoyed all those things so much, and I learned a great deal. I was amazed at all the things that went on at Chestnut Hill. I was amazed at how many children there were in Mrs. Willannon's afternoon classroom, <laughs> and I knew she had just as many in the morning. I was amazed at all the learning that was going on in there, in different groups, but all at the same time and how Mrs. Molanin, Wolanin moved around the room, keeping everything going just the way it was supposed to. I don't know how she did it, and I remember thinking that she must go home every single day absolutely drained, because I was exhausted after a couple hours. And then a couple years later, I got to do it all over again with my younger daughter, and it was just as much fun. And then as they got older, of course, I didn't have as many opportunities to go to school anymore, but I continued to volunteer for everything I could, and so three years ago, it just seemed only natural that I should try to be a school board member. And so I did, I gave it a shot, and I was successful. And now I'm your board secretary. And when I joined this board, I thought I knew a lot about the Midland Public Schools. And I thought I was the biggest fan of the Midland Public Schools. That part is still true. But I have learned an awful lot since then. I've learned um, all the different things that happen, continue to happen in the middle and public schools, and I'll tell you what, I continue to be amazed all the time at all the things that happen. And I'm gonna tell you just a few of them right now. I was amazed at Tracy Renfro and her staff at Chestnut Hill, which until very recently was a very highly performing school, and then all of a sudden it became something called a focus school, but not for long, because Tracy Renfro and her staff solved that problem in very short order. And I was amazed at the staff and the teachers at East Lawn and how they attacked their truancy problem. And they joined with Judge Allen and some local helping agencies and they were very successful also. And in fact, they recently had a perfect attendance day. I'm still amazed by that. That is really something. And then there was Mr. Fox who took some of his computer science students to a competition that high school students had never participated in before, only um, college students and professionals in the field. He had to find out first if they would let high school students compete. They did, he took them, and they did very well. So those are some of the things that continue to amaze me, and as I said, those are just a few things, and I know you all could tell me many, many more things. I'm the child of an educator. My father was a school teacher and later a principal. And sadly, he never encouraged any of his children to become a teacher because he said the work was hard, the responsibility tremendous, and the compensation not enough. That was a long time ago, but personally, I don't think those things have changed much. Um, 
I always suspected that being a teacher was way too hard a job for me. And when I volunteered in Mrs. Wolanin's classroom, that suspicion was confirmed for me. <laughs> Not too long ago, I saw a list of responsibilities of teachers sometime in the late 1800s. And I, I'm not sure now where I read it, but I think it might have been in some lighthearted publication, maybe like the Saturday Evening Post or something. But some of the things teachers had to do in those days included splitting wood, starting fires to heat the classroom, dust the classroom, sweep the floors and mop the floors, trim the uh, wicks in the oil lamps and fill the lamps. And I thought to myself, Man, teaching was a hard job in those days. So fortunately, teachers today don't have to split wood or haul water or dust classrooms. Although, <laughs> I sometimes think that nothing would really surprise me. So just for kicks, I googled a public school teacher's position description. This is not from Midland Public Schools, just a generic position description. And today, we don't ask you to haul water or trim lamp wicks or dust or mop. Instead, we ask you to educate, motivate, inspire, and empower. And of course, we want you to turn out students that score very highly on every standardized test they take. It's obvious to me that your jobs get harder every day. And unfortunately, the compensation piece doesn't match that. I've read that in some countries of the world, teachers are as highly respected and as highly paid as physicians, and I wish we would do that here in our country. But I know that not all rewards are monetary, and I think about a teacher that I went to see at a parent-teacher conference a few years ago. She was a math teacher at Midland High, and I went to ask her how my daughter was doing because my daughter didn't tell me how she was doing. So I noticed that there was a long line at this woman's table, and I know that some of the parents were not real happy to be there, and they were not very polite to this teacher. And so when it was finally my turn, I said to her, it must be frustrating to work with students every day and to keep trying to teach them math when they maybe aren't really interested in learning math. And she said, well, it can be. But then there's always that day when it clicks for them, and they get it. And that's so exciting. And I was amazed by that. And then, also more recently, my friend's daughter was accepted to a graduate program at Harvard University. Very exciting thing. And one of the first people she wanted to share that news with was one of her former teachers, Carol Neff. And Carol Neff was so excited, she had it announced over the PA system. <laughs> And my daughter came home from school and said, oh, I heard on the announcements that Denise got accepted to Harvard. And we all got a chuckle out of that. But it demonstrated for me how much teachers invest in their students and how they can share in their successes. And so today, as a member of the Midland Public Schools Board of Education and as a parent of two Midland High graduates, I thank you for continuing to not only educate <coughs> students, but for motivating and inspiring and empowering them and all the other wonderful things you do for our students. I also thank you for your absolute dedication to your profession, to the Midland Public Schools, and most of all to your students. I've said it before, I'm going to say it one more time. They owe you a lifetime of gratitude. Thank you so much. And now it's my pleasure to call Mr. Paul Schroll to the stage. On the stool? <laughs> off the stool. I'll go off. Welcome to the 2014 Gerstacker Teacher Awards Program. My name is Steve Poole, and I'm the principal at Jefferson Middle School. I'm very excited that we have a winner from Jefferson Middle School, but obviously I'm not able to attend today and Mr. Schroll, our assistant principal, will be doing the program. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> it is indeed a great day to be a Husky. Uh, I'm honored. First of all, Steve introduced me. I'm Paul Schroll. I'm assistant principal at Jefferson. Proud to be at Jefferson. And I'm also, I feel honored and blessed to be here today speaking to you. Uh, for the 50 years that Jefferson has had outstanding staff, and so, I share in that glory today with you 
and um, we have someone very special today to, uh, to honor. It's difficult to remain coy about this uh, program's first Gerstacker Outstanding Teacher Awardee. This person is unique. They're a one of a kind. I could say one or two words and everybody in this room would know who they are. Well, so as I continue uh, to share student and parent comments, uh, taken from the many letters that uh, the selection kid, uh, committee received on this person's behalf, it will quickly become clear of whom I speak. I have some uh, comments from uh, past administrators. This educator has worked in four different buildings during their MPS career, and these are some comments from this teacher's administrator. Ensures students and parents know his expectations. Involved in the total school program. Willing to put in the extra time to address identified needs. Student-centered, thinks about students first. Well, I've narrowed it down <laughs> to every teacher at Jefferson. So now I'd like to share some of the student and parent comments from the letters, 16 in all that were written to recommend this Husky for recognition today. A parent writes, I hope every teacher in the MPS system would be like this teacher. Expert in the field, patient, professional, always interacting with the students. Another remarks, extraordinarily committed to the success of his students. He sets high standards for his students and instills the belief in them that they can achieve their goals. Here's a unique perspective. This is from a guest teacher who in the room was able to see that this teacher knows his students well, takes an interest in their unique challenges as well as their gifts, celebrates them, and is skillful at individualizing a teaching strategy aimed at reaching the student's highest potential the maximum potential. And a comment from a student that they could not imagine their academic success without this wonderful teaching, without this person's wonderful teaching and encouragement. Thank you, Mr. Schroll, for that presentation. And now we are honored to introduce the newest member of the Gerstacker Award family. Hold on a second, Steve. <clears throat> He's like 100 miles away, so I can say whatever I want. Uh, there, there's some folks that couldn't be here today uh, to help and celebrate, and so um, I have some comments from them. That's our sixth grade. Grade. And our subdued eighth graders. There are a couple uh, other special uh, people who couldn't be here today, um, and I saved them for last because they will divulge who this year's winner is. Congratulations, Dad. I'm really happy for you. Hey, Dad. Congrats on winning the Gerstacker. Mr. Jeff Beckwith. I haven't talked in front of people in a while, just little kids. <laughs> a little bit different on it. Uh, yeah, 
Steve Poole came to the hallway this week around Tuesday or Wednesday and uh, says, oh yeah, I was going to talk to you. Uh, you're going to the Gerstackers Thursday. And I said, uh, no. He says, oh, I need someone to take pictures. I, said, I didn't have an excuse. Could have made up one, but I didn't. I said, yeah, okay, I'll be there. And uh, so, yeah, this was a uh, rather large surprise. Um, <laughs> I, I, I really don't know what to see uh, the Chestnut Hill things that Libby was talking about. I'm sorry, it's your daughter's name. Yvonne, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, brings me back to when I was uh, thinking about teaching and I volunteered at Chestnut Hill. And I see the Chestnut Hill teachers here and I see the teachers that were I was at Mills and at Central and Siebert and Jefferson. And uh, I don't, I'm just really surprised. I, this, is a, this is a big surprise. I, I don't know what else to say and I see my Retired coffee buddies. <laughs> um, and my friends around the hallway there. Okay, <laughs> every day on it. Um, and the other thing I can just say at the end on this is that there's a lot more people that are worthy than I am of this thing. I, I honestly swear, half the time I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm not sure of what I'm doing. <laughs> Everybody does it better. <laughs> and, um, yeah. But thank you. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Our next presenter is Mr. Jeff Penix. Well, before getting rolling, um, just wanted to pass my congratulations on to Jeff as well. And this is coming from the parent side of the fence. Uh, my, parent, uh, my daughter last year had the good fortune of having Jeff for two classes, and he was outstanding. So for not knowing what you're doing, you did a hell of a good job. <laughs> but seriously, seriously, very, very, de very deserving. And uh, I, on behalf of everybody in the room, I'm sure we're, we're all very happy for you. Also would like to... Uh, express my appreciation to the Gerstacker family. As you saw in your uh, program, we're approaching the 60th anniversary uh, for that. Just uh, that's outstanding support, and we really appreciate their support for this award. In preparing my comments for this afternoon, I had the good fortune of speaking with and reviewing the written thoughts of a number of people who have worked with the next recipient of a Gerstacker Award. Some worked with her as a parent, and others worked with her as a colleague. Some currently work with her and some last worked with her more than 15 years ago. What was interesting was the consistency of the words people use when talking about our next recipient. As teachers, we know that words are important. They need to be spelled correctly, used in the right context, and chosen carefully when communicating emotion. Words can hurt, words can heal, and words can inspire. People even make judgments about one another based on the words a person chooses to use. After all, the old saying goes that the words a person uses tells a lot about the person using them. After completing background work for today's speech, I propose modifying that old adage to something like the words others use to describe you speaks volumes about how they feel about you. Words like incredible work ethic, dedication to her students, and inspiration were used repeatedly by those who shared thoughts about our next recipient. For example, colleagues used words of admiration when commenting about our recipient's well-known work ethic. A colleague stated, you will never outwork her. She's like the Energizer Bunny. 
She has an incredible drive to deliver top shelf learning experiences to her students. I have learned a lot from simply working with her. A colleague who was newer to the profession chose these words when commenting on our recipient's work ethic. Anyone that knows her can attest to the fact that she has a first to arrive and last to leave mentality. She puts her heart and soul into her career and truly wants the best for her students. As I mentioned moments ago, words are important. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the word dedication means a feeling of very strong support for or loyalty to someone or something. The word dedication, as you might imagine, was used repeatedly when people were discussing our next recipient. A colleague who has worked with a recipient in a variety of capacities through the years used these words to describe her dedication to her job. She is a dedicated teacher. She brings so much joy to the lives of the students she teaches. She runs her classroom with all the efficiency of the best business model, but does so with warmth, kindness, song, and story. She convinces her students that they can be authors and artists as well as scientists and mathematicians. She teaches them to express themselves and to be proud of themselves. She enriches their lives. Who wouldn't love being a part of her classroom? In the same vein, a parent who volunteered in our next recipient's classroom also mentioned the word dedication. She stated she is a brilliant, brilliantly talented teacher. Her dedication to inspiring her children to want to learn and take pride in their individual accomplishments was incredible to watch. The parent went on to add, I am so thankful for teachers like her who inspire our children to want to learn and the process build their self-confidence and self-respect. Another word that was used regularly was the word inspire. When people use this word, they are attempting to communicate the feeling that an individual, group, or team feels when they are motivated to do something that they might not otherwise do on their own. Inspiration is powerful. Inspiration causes change. Inspiration is the spark that ignites a fire. Our next recipient inspires both students and colleagues alike. A colleague so aptly stated, I am so fortunate to have ended up teaching with such a kind and talented educator. She is an inspiration for those that work with her and a blessing for the students in her classroom. As I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, the similarity of the words used to describe our next recipient was fascinating. A parent used these words to describe our next recipient. She is truly an exceptional teacher that goes above and beyond to create an exciting and inviting learning experience. The children feel safe, loved, and truly inspired to learn through her teaching methodology. She reaches down deep and pulls the very best out of these kids and helps them feel good about themselves. So who are these words about? They are about someone who was described by a professor at CMU who supervised her as a te student teacher as a top prospect, just excellent, one of the best teachers I've had. The previous mentioned words are also about someone whose father was a teacher a middle school principal and also a superintendent. Someone with an older sister who also went into education. <laughs> this person hails from the great white north of the upper peninsula where the weather is tough and the people are tougher. In high school this person was a gymnast, cheerleader, and ran track for a high school in Iron River. When I inquired into what events, track events she competed in, her husband told me that she was a sprinter. He also humorously added, I think it's safe to say that she was not a high jumper, hurdler, or discus thrower. <laughs> While a recipient's desire to be her best has hopefully been well established by now, I would have to say that due to her petite nature, I can't really picture her participating in those events either. I can picture, however, our next recipient using her good sense of humor and her unflappable nature to expertly handle an incident where some unexpected words were used a couple of years ago in her kindergarten classroom. To set the scene for this story, I need to first say that it is a common practice to have a letter of the week in kindergarten. Phonics activities, writing activities, et cetera, are all, are all geared toward the letter of the week. In this case, the letter of the week was P. <laughs> now, you don't have to be much of a child psychologist to know that bathroom humor and words related to bodily functions can turn anyone into a budding Jerry Seinfeld in the eyes of many <laughs> kindergartners. Well, as the story goes, our recipient ran into some unexpected turbulence with her sound muncher activity. <clears throat> In case you are unfamiliar with the term sound muncher, it is actually a fancy mini trash can. 
that eats objects that students feed him that start with the letter of the week. So in this case, the sound muncher had a healthy diet of things that started with the letter P. On Wednesday this particular week, our next recipient followed her well-established routine and pulled out items that the students fed the sound muncher. Items such as a pencil, a plastic plane, and a piece of paper were slowly removed from the sound muncher one by one. All the items were, after all the items were removed, as was the classroom custom, our next recipient asked for other words that the sound muncher activity may have made the kids think of. As one might imagine, a number of plausible words were shared. Words such as popcorn, plants, and penguin were shared just like they had always been. Then little Jimmy, who was by no means a troublemaker, but who badly wanted to share an idea, offered up a slang word that kindergartners just love for bathroom function number one. <laughs> Our next recipient handled the unexpected curveball with class, the appropriate dexter dexterity, and instantly settled down the giggles and smiles, moved on with the rest of her day. Thursday rolled around and it was time, the time of day for the eagerly awaited sound muncher activity. By now you know the routine and when the question was asked, children, did the sound muncher make you think of anything today that starts with letter P? A hand shot up in the air. Pizza was the response. Another hand confidently arose. Pilot was the answer. Reliable little Billy's hand waved in the air and when called upon the slang word for bodily function number two <laughs> was ever so enthusiastically shared. Unfortunately, we're going downhill from here. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you would have thought Jay Leno or David Letterman were in the house. Those kind of words are like comedic gold to kindergartners. <laughs> Nonetheless, our next recipient rallied the troops and ever so effectively moved on with the rest of her day. Thank goodness Friday was on the horizon. Friday arrives, it's a great day. The kids are focused, lessons are hitting their marks, and then came sound muncher time. As I mentioned before, the kids truly look forward to seeing the items that the sound muncher consumed. When you couple that enthusiasm with the desire to be called on by their teacher, you've got a situation where the kids are on the edges of their seats. A small purse was the first item removed. Next came a pepper from Grandpa's garden. The sound muncher was hungry on this particular Friday and the kids loved every minute of it. Did anyone think of any words that started with our letter of the week, our next recipient asked. Princess, said Jenna with the pigtails. Hi, said Stephen. This is great, thinks our recipient. These kids are on a roll. Oh, darling Danny's hand is in the air for some time. It had been in the air for some time. Thank you for your patience. Danny, what did the sound muncher make you think of? And wouldn't you know it, darling Danny stood up, pulled down his pants. <laughs> and ever so innocently pointed out that the word private started with the letter P. <laughs> As I said moments ago, words are important <laughs> and they must be selected carefully. <clears throat> it goes without saying that among the many qualities of our next recipient, a great sense of humor is also one of them. As I'm sure you will agree, she didn't have the ability to laugh, the chances of her having a lengthy and successful career would have been slim to none. <laughs> well, it's time for me to bring this thing in for a landing. I'm hoping by now that it is obvious that the words shared so far about someone who was a great teacher and a great colleague. Lynn Tolfa, these words are about you. The best part about these words, Lynn, is they were said by the heart from numerous colleagues, parents, and students who appreciate and respect what you give, the impact you make, and the expertise with which you carry out your duties. And before I wrap things up, I must say that since I focused heavily on the importance of words, 
I am honored to officially add the words Gerstacker Award winner to that long list that people will use to describe you. Congratulations. That was just so funny. <laughs> enjoying all of this so much I keep forgetting to perform my next job duty. <laughs> next I'd like to call Mr. Jeff Jaster to the stage. Good afternoon. Congratulations Lynn. My, my two daughters benefited from being in her kindergarten classroom. And I'm, what the? No, it wasn't that room, well, that, that year. <laughs> um, and one other personal note, um, congratulations to Wendy Winters. I was one of her third grade students. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's an honor to be here today. Um, Oh, I wanted to say to all the teachers, I hope you've had a good Teacher Appreciation Week as well, but it's an honor to be here today, and this is the second consecutive year that I've had the chance to present a Gerstacker Award to a Northeast Viking staff member, so that's always exciting. Uh, this year's winner, uh, like other winners, is no different. They, they're committed, they embody uh, great teaching in everything that they do, they're professional, they contribute to everything from school improvement to volunteering for school parties, dances, all those things. Um, but I'm going to talk just a little bit about the great teaching aspect of it. And, and these characteristics you've heard already mentioned by most of the presenters tonight. But what I would like to focus on are, are some characteristics. If you, if you read research about great teaching and learning and what's important for kids, there are some themes that reoccur over and over. And, and it's not a clean number. I was hoping to just have like a top 10 list. But really, I, I found 12 characteristics that I thought really recurred over and over in all, all the reading that I've done on the topic. So in no particular order, um, great teachers always have to show a passion for what they're teaching. They need to have a love for kids, understand the role of school in the child's life, a work ethic that doesn't quit. As you've heard before, most of these winners have been, you know, they, they first to show up and the last to go home. A willingness to be reflective, work collaboratively, a willingness to change, and then understand um, that being a great teacher is also uh, requiring them to do something above and beyond, and that means pushing themselves to always work harder the next year and to do more um, with, in some cases, less, but to get the job done. A love of subject, organization, enough ego to get through the tough days. You know, everybody has days where they get beat up a little bit and the kids win. You know, you have to be able to come back the next day and uh, have that fortitude that you're going to make it better. Um, and then last but not least, enough humility to know that it's not about you. You're there because of the kids in your classroom. So, to speak um, really briefly to each of these points, this year's Northeast winner uh, truly does have a love for what he does. And even as a veteran teacher, He's committed to continuous improvement, becoming better at his craft. Definitely a love for kids. This year's winner volunteers. Um, he's always at school functions, also district level functions as well. And uh, the reason is just because he knows it's important for the kids to see him at these events. Uh, not necessarily his responsibility, but he knows that's the right thing to do. 
understand the role of, of school in the child's life. The teacher understands that school is more than just uh, what's learned inside the walls of the classroom. You know, there's also an opportunity to teach um, some ethics. You can, you can role model uh, hard work, uh, teamwork, cooperation, you know, and you can even teach kids how to fail with um, some dignity and use that to build, build skills the next time around and set goals and work harder. So uh, work ethic was one of them. This teacher uh, is a regular traveler because of the nature of the subject that he teaches. And so, uh, and because of that, you heard me mention that they're often here early and they typically end the day fairly late. Uh, it's not uncommon to see this person leave after dark. Person values the input of others and he's a great listener. Um, personally, I can speak to this. Anytime we have staff meetings, it's not uncommon at all for that person, uh, or the, the winner this year, to just sit there. You can tell they're taking all of it in, they're reflective, they're listening. And then just when you need um, that positive support or that comment to help spur the discussion a little further, uh, impeccable timing and, and offers some professional and appropriate advice for the group at just the right time. Willing to work collaboratively, ask any Northeast staff member who's served on a committee with this person. Uh, he's respected, inputs uh, valued, and a great team player. Uh, the, to speak to the characteristic of being willing to change. Uh, this teacher has 36 years in education, t 21 of them with MPS, but 36 years total. And uh, in the 36th year, this teacher is part of the iPad initiative in the middle school. So that speaks to a willingness to change. Um, understands that being a great teacher is a constant struggle. As mentioned, uh, very self-reflective, willing to work with others, uh, love of subject. This person is also a professional musician in his own right. Organization, it goes without saying that you can't be a band director um, and not have the trait of organization. We, uh, when you consider marching season, I'm always impressed <laughs> because <laughs> clearly we know who it is. Uh, I'm always impressed because uh, you know, I, I was a science teacher and I, you thought a, a room full of 30 was a lot of kids and you go out to the, to the field when they're practicing in marching season, there's 65, 70 kids out there and it looks like herding cats, you know, but <laughs> by the time uh, the football game comes around or the parade, they always perform. Um, and since we know it is Mr. Roger Stevens, um, <laughs> You know, speak to you know some of the other things that he's great at. He, on tough days, he always makes a plan uh, for the next day to make things better, and he clearly knows it's about the kids, and that's why he arranges the concerts and the festivals, and he volunteers to judge at festival, uh, performs at school events, so many other things that that I can't really fit into the time that we have, as as with all the Gerstacker winners, uh, like previous winners. Rogers made a huge impact on many people, as I said, 36 years in education, uh, 21 of those here in Midland. He previously worked for North Branch Schools, uh, LaSalle Peru High School in Illinois, Flint Carmen Ainsworth Community Schools, and he was hired by MPS in 1993. And you know, if you just take a, a simple average and you think about how many kids are impacted by a teacher each year, uh, you know, just even if we say 30, um, clearly band directors have a lot more kids than that. 150 students a year, over the course of that 36 year in career, 5,000 kids. You know, and you, you add to that all the parents that were impacted and the, and the friends and the students and the people who attended concerts. You're talking impact on 15 to 20,000 people in a career in a, in a town the size of Midland. That, that's almost everybody. I'm, I'm sure Roger, <laughs> Roger cannot get up and go to Myers Saturday morning in his sweatpants, probably. He's got to. <laughs> He's got to be uh, ready to go. So um, from my perspective, Mr. Stevens is a perfect recipient for the award. Uh, here are a few short comments from, from the uh, nomination letter that was written about him and then from, also from Ms. Renfro. And this is from a parent. I've witnessed firsthand the patience, drive, and commitment that he shows his students every day. Uh, he can demonstrate on every instrument as needed. He's a professional percussionist. Percussion students receive expert instruction as time permits. And then, you know, for those who know him, uh, as I said, he, he's committed to improving. He, he works with technology. I, I just observed him a few days ago, 
and the kids in, ba in the band room were reading and writing, and he had the, the YouTube video clips of the Marine Marching Band up there. So uh, always doing new things to keep the kids attentive, and it's just amazing. Ms. Renfro, uh, Chestnut Hill principal, stated that Mr. Stevens is the most pro professional educator that she's worked with in the music department in her career. He's passionate, goes out of his way to include all students, um, especially those with special needs. So, without further ado, I'll welcome uh, Mr. Stevens to the stage. Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, I'm really uh, humbled by this award, and thank you to the, to the Gerstacker family for creating this tradition and maintaining it for so long. Um, I think you need to know that uh, my wife deserves an Academy Award. <laughs> Um, when the Gerstacker is announced and the date goes on a calendar, and we keep a, a desk-sized calendar on the refrigerator, um, and the mantra in the house is, if it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. It doesn't happen. And so it was up there. And um, there's also um, some family events that are happening this weekend. And uh, as the plans unfolded, um, it was like, well, that's pretty cool that all these folks are going to come in. And, and then my dear friend Linda Murray <laughs> um, invited my wife out to lunch. I think it was in spring break. I thought nothing of that because we're friends. We've been friends for years. And for the two of them to go out and have lunch is a great idea. And as time progressed, I think Linda sent an email that said, we're, we're fortunate enough to have a music staff member. And I said, whoa. And um, I started to put two and two together. And I started to think, man, could this be me? <laughs> and then nothing happened. <laughs> So um, I came in here just, you know, taking bets on which one of the music staff it would be because it wasn't me. <laughs> so thank you to my family. And Christine, it's great to see you. <laughs> All of you girls, wow. Um, one of my favorite authors is uh, a lady by the name of Mary Baker Eddy. And she has a sentence that means a lot to me, especially as a teacher. She says, the time for thinkers has come. And I hope that uh, the students in my class will take that to heart and become thinkers. Someone mentioned uh, education isn't just what goes on in the classroom. And that's totally, totally true. There's an awful lot that happens that's very, very meaningful. And it can't be contained in the school walls. And we've got to get those kids to be thinkers and to move forward. They've got a ton of stuff to do that lies in front of them. I applaud all of you. You are amazing people and amazing teachers. Um, previous speaker, that I am better because I work with you 
I learn from you, and um, I'm very grateful for this award. Thank you very much. Last presenter today is Ms. Linda Lipset. I don't know if I need the stool or not. I have heels on. I'm afraid I'll fall off, and then we'll have to fill out an accident report. So I think <laughs> I'll, I think I'll, I'll stay low with this. Before I begin my comments about our final recipient for this evening, I just would like to echo my colleagues and say thank you to the Gerstacker family and group in, in having this award. You know, it makes such a difference to be able to recognize the outstanding teachers that we have, and we have, they're all outstanding teachers. It's exciting to be able to say that and truly believe it. Um, but I think this is a highlight each year for me to come, as I know it is for, for many of you, and see you know, who is going to be honored this year. And we always know it's someone that's well-deserving, and uh, that goes for the, the ones that we've heard today. And I'm excited to be able to share this evening about uh, another wonderful winner. On that note, I'd like to ask, when are our paths chosen? Do we choose them, or are they chosen for us? This is an interesting history to the recipient for today, and I'm honored to be able to share about her and her outstanding work with the Midland Public Schools. Perhaps one of the best things to me about preparing for tonight was to be able to look back at the reflections of many people who shared their thoughts um, and talked about her. The honoree is truly dedicated to student learning and the creation of positive learning opportunities. These attributes are noted through comments of staff, parents, and students. A colleague shared, She's an energetic, hardworking educator who has the ability to bring out the best in her students and colleagues. Another wrote, she's fabulous with students who need extensions and with students that need that extra attention to be successful. A parent wrote, she demonstrates extensive creativity in the classroom, inspiring her students to explore new topics with enthusiasm. She goes out of her way to challenge students and push them beyond their comfort zones. A student said, she makes learning fun. She expects us to work hard and to do our best. Another wrote, she's very creative, and she always knows how to make something boring into something amazingly fun. She cheers everybody up when they're not having a good day. That's what I love best about her. Her journey is an around the world journey that begins in South Korea. In South Korea, when a child reaches one year of age, a key part of the birthday celebrations activities is a ceremony where the child is seated before a table on which various foods and objects are placed. And then here she is encouraged to pick out one or two of those objects. And according to the tradition, the first or second one that's chosen is supposed to foretell that infant's future. How appropriate it is then that this teacher chose a pencil that day, the symbol to indicate being a successful scholar the symbol of what was to come. When are our paths chosen? Do we choose them? Are they chosen for us? From South Korea to Georgia, to Hawaii, back to Georgia, to high school in Texas, this honoree has had the opportunity to experience different regions and different ways of living and learning. The importance and support of family evident in her growing up and in her life today. She earned both her Bachelor of Arts degree in elementary education and her Master of Education degree from Saginaw Valley State University. She also earned her Ed Specialist degree in leadership from Oakland University. She's truly a lifelong learner as she completes her Certificate of International Baccalaureate Education this May from Oakland University. This honoree was a student teacher for the Midland Public Schools in first grade, as a, in a first grade classroom. She was identified as a top candidate on a recruiting trip to Saginaw Valley University by one of the interviewers who noted, she likes all grade levels <laughs> and seems comfortable with all grade levels. This is certainly evident in her work with students within the Midland Public Schools. She's had a positive impact on students through her role as a gifted and talented teacher 
and as a classroom teacher at both the elementary and middle school levels. To each role, she brings a positive attitude and enthusiasm that is translated to her students to give them wonderfully cherished experiences. In addition to her work as a classroom teacher, she served as a differentiated instruction coach and continues to contribute to many building and district committees. She's involved, dynamic, professional, and most importantly, enthusiastic about her job and the success of her students. These are all adjectives that are used to describe the great teachers in our lives and are specific characteristics that embody excellence in teaching. This honoree certainly models that description. Through her classroom blog, Denizen Bucks, an awkward authors club where she encourages students to add pizzazz to their writing. She gives opportunities to students to learn and grow, supported to success with the freedom to explore their interests. A student wrote, I love that you teach the way no other teacher teaches. You created this whole world in the classroom. You even created currency. Another wrote, I love you because you put up with me for two whole years. <laughs> now that was actually a reflection because she taught students in fourth grade and then moved up to fifth grade with many of them. And perhaps the best compliment of all, I understand what you are teaching. Every single day, I love going to school because of you. An additional reflection from a close colleague shared, her creativity is boundless, her skills impeccable, and her classroom is a place every child should experience. She has a way of creating a classroom atmosphere or culture that encourages each child to make an effort and to respect the effort of their classmates. These do not happen by chance or magic or by wishing that they were so. They happen at the hand of a very gifted teacher. A final comment that seems to sum it up best, going into her classroom is like going from black and white into Oz. When are our paths chosen? Do we choose them? Are they chosen for us? Whether we choose our paths or whether they're chosen for us, it's evident that this Gerstecker winner's path is one that's made a positive difference in the lives of her students, her colleagues, and our community. With that in her own words, hey, 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 listen up, listen up. <laughs> Please sit back and enjoy this short video that's a bit of a timeline about this winner, Mrs. Marianne Lepofsky.
know what to say. Um, but as you know, you realize it's you, your life flashes before your eyes for a second, and I start to go, oh yeah, dad was supposed to come up my birthday, and then Easter, and then shows up on a random Tuesday in May. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just feel so lucky to be able to have this job, and, and to be a teacher, and just to get to teach with all of you. Um, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> um, I just really am just, I love my Adams family and I love across MPS, I get to work with so many of you and you inspire me every day and I'm just grateful for all of you. And um, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, why are you a teacher? And I always say, you know, it's either rock star or a teacher. <laughs> and my friends who sang karaoke with me, which thank goodness none of that was up there, know that that really wasn't an option for me. And uh, at least in the classroom, they have to listen to me sing. <laughs> and, um, you know, thank you so much. And thank you for making me feel like a rock star. And you are all rock stars, too. So thank you. <laughs> Well, congratulations to our Gerstacker winners and our retirees, um, and please join us downstairs, I'm going to say upstairs, downstairs for refreshments. Thank you. <laughs>